Hey, I'm Matt. Today I want to share with you five things every beginner woodworker should know about pocket hole joiners. If you're interested in any of the jigs, clamps, things like that you see in the video today, I'll put those in the description below for you. I personally think pocket hole joiner is one of the greatest gifts ever given to beginner woodworkers. It allows you to get started woodworking and build really awesome projects without having to know a lot of complicated joinery or have a lot of expensive tools. Number one on the list is you got to pick a jig that's right for you. Now, how do you do that? Well, I've got reviews on both the Craig 720, the Masca M2, as well as the Masca uh, Twin Jig. You can go check those out, see which one actually fits your needs. I prefer the Masca M2. I like that it's an all metal construction. I like how just sturdy it is. Now, this Craig 720, I wasn't really a fan of the little side wings that are really flimsy but the actual clamping system is really good on this as far as that it automatically adjusts to the size stock you're gonna be clamping. If you're on a tight budget or you just need it in a tight spot, the Masca Twin Jig is a really good jig to start with. You can get it for about 30 bucks for, with the jig, the drill bit, and the driver bit. The only caveat to that is you're gonna need some type of clamp to clamp it to the board to be able to hold it in place while you drill your pocket holes. Have you thought about adding a CNC machine to your woodworking shop? I'd like to tell you about my machine, the Shapeco 4 XXL from Carbide 3D, the sponsor of today's video. It doesn't matter if you're just getting started in woodworking or you've been doing it for a while, adding a CNC machine to your shop can level up your game. In other words, you'll be able to add customization, create custom products that like you would never have done before. What that's gonna allow is you to bring a lot of extra income into your business and essentially pay for the CNC in no time. What I really appreciate about Carbide 3D is how easy they are to actually get started and start making projects on your own. When I got mine, I had zero idea how to operate a CNC. I barely even knew how to spell CNC. That's how new I was to it. And I was able to get up and running making mallets, mallet templates, custom organization trays for the shop, uh, custom catch-all trays that I've been able to sell on our store, and a lot, lot more. It's just really easy to get it up and running with Carbide 3D. You're gonna get the CNC machine, you're gonna get that hybrid table to be able to clamp things down. And speaking of, it comes with work holding, in other words, those clamps that help hold your pieces steady while it's cutting. It's gonna come with dust collection attachments. You'll get free software, Carbide Create, that you can actually download now and play with if you want to before you buy your machine. You're gonna get the Carbide Motion that helps control the machine in the shop. And you get free training and support if you need that. You can check out carbide3d.com to see the full line of CNC's they have available and you can start making some cool projects for yourself. Number two on the list is setup. You have to set your pocket hole jig and the bit up properly to get optimal results. So it doesn't matter if you choose Craig or Masco or Armor, whoever you choose, you gotta set the depth stop or this collar on your drill bit. Masca has this little turret that you can drop in their jig and spin and set to whatever depth. So we're gonna be drilling in three quarter inch thick material. We'll spin that around to three quarters of an inch, then you can just tighten that up. On the Craig jig, it actually has that scale on the back. You just set your drill bit in there, snap it in place, then you move the collar to the three quarter inch area and tighten it down. Or, it may be hard to see on camera, but right here, Craig, on their bits, they actually have printed half inch, three quarter, and one and a half, and with a sight window in this stop collar. So you could just move it to the three quarter inch spot and tighten it down there. One thing I highly encourage you to do is pick up extra bits. I've actually got three extra on hand because this very little tip right there is going to break off at some point, whether that be during drilling a hole or most likely when you drop the bit, it's gonna pop that end off. They're very fragile right there on the end. So it's a really good idea to keep a couple of these on hand. The next thing you need to know is to set up the jig itself, it just needs to be able to clamp the piece in place firmly. It doesn't need to be overly tight, but it needs to be where you can lock that in. This piece is not gonna move while you drill your holes. The Masca has this adjustable clamp that you can adjust by screwing this in or out so you can make it tighter or looser. The Craig has an automatic or an auto max as they call it clamp. You just push it down and it clamps it in place. By doing this, you also don't have to worry about setting the depth of the jig because it automatically is set. So in other words, you don't move this anymore. You just drill the hole whenever this gets tight. On the Masca, it depends on whatever thick material you're using. So if we're using a one by or three quarters inch thick, then we're gonna set this on three quarters of an inch. And all you do is unloosen these and then you just line it up with that mark and tighten it down. Setup is really that easy. Number three on the list is how to actually drill the pocket holes and get a clean pocket hole, which is a problem for a lot of people. And then how to actually drive the screws so that they don't strip or break through the other side of your project. When drilling your pocket holes, let the drill do the work. In other words, give it, put it on the highest setting. Don't force it down in there. Let the drill bit cut the wood and drill down in there. That'll give you cleaner cuts 
it'll give you a better pocket hole. If you force it down in there or put too much pressure, you'll wind up start seeing a lot of tear out around that hole. And if you can drill with the grain as much as possible, you'll get cleaner holes. If you have to drill across the grain, a lot of times it doesn't matter how slow you go, you're still gonna see a little bit of tear out. That's okay, you can 99% of the time just take some sandpaper and clean that up. Now that your pocket holes are drilled, you're gonna join your boards together and there's a way you need to assemble those. If you have pocket holes going this away, that's improper. You don't want to screw into the end grain of your board. It's gonna create a weak joint. What you wanna do is go from the other way through the end grain into the edge grain. That's gonna create a nice strong joint. Also, if you were going to make a 90 degree angle there, if you needed to join these at a 90 degree angle, you wouldn't wanna drive them in this direction most of the time because it's gonna drive out this way toward the edge. What you wanna do is turn that board around and actually drive the screw into the meat of the board. You got more board there. And of course, you can always make tabletops or anything like that by joining them edge to edge. Now, if we're gonna drive that screw, if you use an impact, I actually almost always use an impact driver. It's not really recommended, but turn it on the lowest setting so they don't overdrive. And the problem with that is even if the screw doesn't break through on the back side of your lumber, what will happen is it'll actually strip inside there and just spin, it won't tighten the joint. With it on its lowest setting, just ease up on the tightness. And that's it, don't go any further. If I turn this on the high speed all the way to three, it's stripped, it's not gonna go anywhere else. You wanna avoid that. Just remember to drill fast and drive slow you'll be right. Number four on the list is screw sizes and types of screws you need to use for your project. One of the most common questions I get is can I use my Craig screws with my Masca jig or my Masca screws with my Craig jig or my pocket hole screws I bought off of Amazon with the jig I have. Yes, you can. They're all, as far as I know, identical screws. Now what you don't wanna do is buy the really cheap screws, so the no-name brand screws. What happens is the head actually twists off and then you've got the piece of screw still in your project. So I actually go with the name brand screws, but you can interchange those if needed. Another common question is, what size screw do I need to use with my project that I'm making? I actually get that so much, I put together a list on my website. I'll drop a link to that uh, screw size guide in the description below so you know that. But for the most part, inch and a quarter is what you're gonna be using on three quarter inch plywood and three quarter inch boards. And then you'll use two and a half inch screws for the two bys that you may be using. You may also see blue ones or silver ones. The blue ones are actually have a special coating on them and you'll use those for outdoor projects like when we made our outdoor chair, outdoor sofa. If you can use these, they won't rust like these silver ones will. You'll use these silver ones for indoor only projects. You'll also notice that there are coarse thread and fine thread. In other words, these threads are further apart than these. These are really close together. These are for hardwood. So your maple, your walnut, things like that. You'll use these screws, these coarse screws on plywood, spruce, pine, and the softer woods like that. For the majority of beginner woodworkers buying your lumber at your local home store, plywood, one by two bys, just get some coarse thread inch and a quarter, coarse thread two and a half inch, get a couple hundred each. They're very inexpensive, have those on hand. Number five on the list are pocket hole jig accessories or pocket hole accessories that you may need. And those are gonna come in the form of clamps. I actually think a face clamp, which is what this is, should be a necessity for pocket hole joinery. What that's gonna do is keep those two pieces flush together while you attach the screw. It's gonna keep them from moving apart it's also gonna keep them from moving this away. It has a little set screw here that you can adjust the tightness. They have these little pivoting heads on them that help keep everything nice and flat. You can also use your workbench to clamp your pieces down. And that'll keep them really flat and really tight to the workbench while you drive your screws. Nothing will make you wanna throw something across the room more than trying to attach a pocket hole screw into at an angle on a 90 degree piece like this. And it just keeps moving and you can't get that flush. That's where the right angle clamp comes in. This is one of those things that you didn't know you needed until you pick one up. What that does is it allows you to actually clamp this in place. This dial rod goes down in the pocket hole. This automatically adjusts tension so you can just squeeze. Once it's tightened up, you can adjust it any way you need to. You can bump it with a mallet, get it perfectly flushed, and you can drive the other pocket hole screw and then take this out and drill that in. This thing is absolutely awesome if you have 90 degree angles to put together, especially like cabinetry, 
boxes, a router table that I built, anything that where two 90 degree pieces are coming together, this thing is invaluable. Another really cool accessory, and this one's kind of special made just for me, and as well as the gold jig, they don't make these. Uh, this is kind of a gift for me. But this is uh, made out of wood. The one that you can buy is made out of MDF, but it has these, it's a mount for your Masky M2, and it has storage on board. These are, there's actually magnets inside there that hold everything nice and tight. And then on here is where you can set your drill depth guide without having to get that turret out and put it down through there. You just put it in there, loosen that off and tighten it. It doesn't matter if you want from half all the way up to inch and a half. And then of course, when not in use, you can just store it right in there. And of course, you get a, you're gonna need a way to sort and keep all of your screws separated. You can keep them in the little plastic boxes that they come in, but I really like this sorter that I bought years ago. This is a Stanley Fat Max one. One of the main reasons I like it to put them in this is because I can actually take these out, which I do very often. And I got all my inch and a quarters in this one. I can take them over to the workbench. And then when I'm done, I can just bring it back over here and drop it back in place. You can pick one up like this Milwaukee. I think I gave $20 for this one on sale. You can actually get them very inexpensive and it's just a great way to keep your screws separated. Pocket hole joiner is one of the greatest joiner methods known to mankind, if you ask me. I just, I love it so much because there's tons and tons of projects you can make with it. And we have a lot of project plans available that are pocket hole plans. That means you can take any of the stuff you've learned today and start building some amazing projects. I'll drop a link to our website where we have the plans available down below. I didn't talk a whole lot about the Masca Twin Jig. I got a full review on this jig on all of these jigs actually. I'll put those in the description below and it'll tell you how to set this up, everything you need to know about each one of these. You can go check them out. If you want 13 of my top pocket hole tips, I'm gonna put that video right there. You can take and click that video, you get a big old virtual fist bump. Also another one of my favorite videos, we're gonna put it right there. Thank you for watching.